uh, as we just talked about, there's a shortage. There's issues logistically with not only lumber, with a lot of different things. We're having trouble. Like, I, I, I don't... I don't want to complain a whole bunch because I feel like we've, as much as there's been some struggles, have been probably on the better side of this than a lot of places. On the lumber been. issue. On the lumber for sure. On the lumber side of things, our game has been okay. Yeah. So, but even from as far as the composite decking, like tr- there's Trex shortages taken for longer lead times at least, right? Tr- from Trex, from Timber Tech, from Fibron, yep. from everybody, decorators, yeah. et cetera. Everybody's kind of facing these shortages, but not anywhere near what the lumber industry was facing and the reason for that at least to my understanding primarily was world shut down pandemic mills got closed this is when they finally did come back it was at like half capacity the treatment plants were sitting with no lumber they were closed too this all kind of shut down and nobody was super worried about it because nobody in the world was moving it was like the lumber wasn't being made yeah that's fine nobody's building anything except the diy market they're Except, out there crushing decks. Well, they weren't like, now they are, right? <laughs> yeah. It paused in March. Then April, May came around and all of a sudden everybody's like, yeah, yeah, pandemic, whatever. It's here to stay. I guess I'll just go back to world to my life and I'm at home and I need a deck and I need a fence and I need to paint my house and everything else. And all of a sudden, boom, the industry gets nailed with like a 50% increase over a normal year for demand. Yep. Instead of With a being, 50% reduction in production. Right. right, which was a halted to nothing. So it was like a double whammy of like, we weren't making anything. Mm-hmm. And even if we were, we couldn't have made enough for what just happened here, but we weren't. Yep. And so double whammy, like we're way short now. And so everything that gets cut immediately planed and immediately into treatment and immediately in a truck and immediately to the distributor and immediately sold. Like there's no, it doesn't sit at any one stage for, for more than seven seconds. Yeah. I think we should actually take a look at some decks and, five or six years from now and see how like how bad they really look it won't take that long because that lumber is going to be so bad it's just like fresh lumber oh, not treated properly right. you know okay. what i mean it's there's leaves like, still on them right? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you can get the brown leaf stuff or the green leaf they stuff didn't, they didn't debark all of the boards <laughs> yeah so. not fast enough yeah I think we're going to go with, uh, like, log framing on <laughs> on, on decks now, <laughs> actually. <laughs> Just, <laughs> like, okay. why waste time cutting them? So, anyways, the result of this thing, of this shortage, has been, like, frustration. People can't get the lumber they need to do the building. And you can, you can hint or try to guess why prices are going up. Shortage of supply, massive demand, prices going up because somebody's like, well, we're working too hard to not be making money. So prices are shooting up on on uh, lumber as well. At the same time, prices on steel framing over the last couple, couple of years have started to come down. And so now we're getting closer and closer. And guys like Scott, who made the switch to steel a few years ago, are laughing because like the guys that yeah. cut down steel trees are still <laughs> cruising. They're still cutting down steel trees like you've never seen before. Um so now there's a lot of people going like, I can't get the lumber. Even if I can get the lumber, it's co- it's co- right now it's cost me twice as much as it normally does. The steel isn't usually much more, or in Scott's case, he's got some tips for us today. Maybe not ever as much as the lumber in the first place. Mm-hmm. So it's available and the cost isn't that much different anymore. And it's going to last forever. And it's going to last forever until you get those big Canadian steel beavers we've talked oh, about yeah. in the past Gotta podcast. Be careful of those. <laughs> you got to watch out for the steel beavers. Steel termites. Yeah. And so... What a perfect guest to bring on because he's worked exclusively with steel. He's getting hit up with questions on these Facebook groups nonstop because he's posting pictures of the steel all the time and he's cruising along being like, yep, crushed another deck this week. And guys are like, I went to seven box stores and peeled off 12 <laughs> two by eights. I can't get my job done. So Scott, this is going to be your show because you're more familiar with this stuff than we are even. And you've kind of given us some talking points so we can get into that a little bit. Wade's going golfing. I'm out. See you later. <laughs> we, <laughs> we've we sold a tiny bit of uh, Trex Elevations. We have not worked with it. We sold it to a contractor who did it. We, over the winter, we've been talking to Fortress for the last number of years, three, two or three two, years, yep. about the Evolutions framing that's finally in market here now and distributed. So we got on board with them at the start of the year. We have the display that we didn't get put up in time before the season started, but we have it. Yeah. So we're we're kind of trying to prime ourselves to get ready for people to start asking for stuff or for us to sell a little bit. And and now you're going to teach us how to do that. Yeah, so. I want to sell it. I think there are so many reasons to do steel framing. So. Yeah, exactly. 